What's up, Tutorinos, and welcome back to the Game Addicts Podcast, a show where we're talking about the modern and retro video games that we play and collect and all that jazz. I am this podcast player, when Brando, and joining me here today as this podcast player, too, is the one and only podfather, Nate Phillips. How you doing, bud? Press X to continue. Press X to continue. Press X to Jason. <laughs> oh, I li- oh, yes, that's a Heavy Rain reference. That's so great that you're saying that, Brando. That ties so well in with... Later on in this episode, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, man. Welcome back to the show, and uh, you know, welcome back to the airwaves uh, here on the Game Addicts Podcast. I am due to record the next deep dive, and I'm still going to do that. However, I wanted to touch on this because I haven't been touching on gaming news lately, and uh, there's a there's a lot of good reasons why, and a lot of it is steered towards negativity. And uh, even though there's a lot of good news to, uh, to talk about. It just always seems like every around the every time you turn around, every t- every time you go around the corner, there's just more negative news and uh, negative. I, I'm not sure if fan base or or just internet reactions because you see it in different communities. You see it like in the Star Wars community a lot. You see it, uh, and, you know, and even in the gaming world a lot. When when things don't go our way, there's a certain group of people that basically are the loudest and. Look. Look to Cyberpunk uh, 2077. Yeah. Didn't that company just get held up with uh, apparently like they had data, been data yeah. breached or some shit? Yeah, and their uh, source code for Witcher 3 and Cyberpunk got sold online in a black or a dark web auction. Now, what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> because the way that I would think is that Cyberpunk or CD Projekt Red would have those source codes copyrighted. In that if you use that source code to make your own game and they can trace it back to you, to the original source code, they can sue you. Hmm. Now, I don't know if that's truly the case, but that, that that's the way that I've always thought like source codes on programs, on games, and stuff like that works in general copyright law. But no, you're right. You know, I've played some cyberpunk. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Is it perfect? No, far from it. Should it have been released when it was? No. You know, and, and 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 I guess maybe it's the hype train. You know, we got too hyped. You know, we got too hyped for Game of Thrones, and it was it didn't live up to a lot of people's expectations. We got too hyped for new Star Wars content, and it didn't live up to expectation. We got too hyped for Cyberpunk. Thankfully, thankfully, um, didn't get too hyped for some other like you know properties. Uh, you know, FF Seven remake <laughs> it wasn't bad. And uh, however, there's a certain group of people who were really angry. Um, about that game, you and, can't make everyone happy all the time. No, man. no. But like when you when you peruse and try to be involved in, in an online community, you know, I'm I'm the positive guy. I like to look at the positive things in everything. Try to try to find it. You know, even if it's at something... least the graphics don't look like pong. <laughs> pong, right? But I mean, uh, you know try to find the positive in every situation and look at it from, a, you know, take myself and my own biases out of the situation and say, okay, what do I not like about this? Okay. Why don't I like it? And not just, you know, uh, yell at the top of my lungs. And, th- and therefore when I do that, I immediately remove the extreme emotional response, I guess, uh, that I would have. Sometimes I even like find that there's more that I like about it than I originally realized. But it just seems like, as a whole, that whole that whole side of the community is just—it's not that fun to talk about. And and I don't want this show to be negative. I wanted—I've always wanted this show to be an escape. You just like when you play games, you know, you know, you know, like like we're a show that talks about games, and, and maybe uh, during during a certain segment and portion of this show's run, 
we spent too much talking about gaming news and not focusing on the actual individual games and just you know here's an episode all about Nazi Nazi the Republic which I did a while back you know there's there's your Resident Evil episode I'm still working on it on, on Resident Evil 2 and 3 from that run but but this episode I felt like there there is some news that has come out that I have not touched upon and now if you follow me on Twitter I probably have retweeted it so you know that I'm aware of it but they have announced the release date for the Mass Effect trilogy remaster. And I'm a huge Mass Effect nerd. Uh, it's one of my favorite series of all times. And uh, the series has been stuck in limbo unless you have a PC or, uh, or, or an Xbox of some sort. You can still play them on there. But if you're, but if you're a PlayStation guy, you're SOL. Uh, to, to play the original trilogy. And they're finally bringing the original trilogy, putting a fresh coat of paint on it, and bringing it to the more modern consoles. It, it will be released for PS4 and Xbox One, uh, but they are going to benefit from the newer consoles as well. And if you have a One X or a PS4 Pro, uh, they're going to run in 4K, 60 frames per second. And they're, yeah, so they're doing a lot of stuff to that. And, and I wanted to talk about that because Nate, you haven't played too much of the Mass Effect trilogy. You you dabbled, from what I understand, right? Yeah, so I played, I would say, a good two-thirds of the first game. And it took me until the second game came out to get that far. So then I just was like, well, might as well start the second game and see what that's about and kind of get an idea. So I played like, I don't know, an hour and a half of the second game or something. And then, of course... At that era of life, I was getting all kinds of games and stuff coming in because I was working at GameStop and yeah. whatnot. So it kind of, you know, flash forward, as it were, to Mass Effect 3 coming out. And again, I picked it up. I played it. I, I have all the collector's editions except for the first one because I'm an idiot. You know, working at GameStop, you see that the $70 collector's edition is online only and you can pre-order it in your store and you're like, eh, whatever. And I was just like, eh, whatever. And now I kick myself for that decision all the time. That you know, that, and that's a really cool, interesting collector's edition because the other two, a little bit more traditional, I guess, in the sense of how it's a collector's edition. But you know, the first one is like a tin. It's like a, it's like a metal tin, and inside is a cardboard, uh, like like almost like a digi pack. Yep. Uh, for you know, for the game, I remember for the longest time I had a dented up, broken Mass Effect One Collector's Edition without the game that I bought from a local store for five dollars. Uh, it'd be simply because he had no price on it and it had no game, and I asked what he was going to sell it for, and he goes, um, "I don't know." Shoot, shoot me an offer, and I was buying other stuff, and I said five bucks, <laughs> so he gave it to me. But then, because I'm a whore. Um, Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> I I found the a, a pretty much really mint copy, uh, at a, like at another store years later for like twenty twenty five bucks, and I'm like, I'm buying it. I, I have Heck to get, yeah, have to get the nice one. So then, now that I had my original copy, and now I have a really nice pristine collectors. I have collectors of two and three. I went back to the store and I bought or the original ship copies of two and three on on 360 and I have the trilogy on PS3 and I have Mass Effect 3 special edition on the Wii U. Ladies and gentlemen, he loves the series Mass Effect. Do you not understand? The only okay, so the only ones I don't have are, are the standalone copies of 2 and 3 on the PS3. The reason I don't is because the only way to get a standalone copy of the first game physical in the, in the United States is to import it from Europe. Because they didn't release, and them. you don't want to go start that whole thing where you got to go import the game from Europe and then go check down two and then go check down three. It, well, and, and then they're too not, much. I mean, and then two or three aren't like aren't expensive, but I don't really feel like spending ten to fifteen bucks plus shipping to get. And the spoiler first. alert: I think you already have copies of the game. Yeah, I have a couple. <laughs> I have a couple, and also, uh, so I originally got Andromeda on the PS4. And then they did a really cool uh, update patch for the One X, for the Xbox One X. And so I found a copy for the Xbox One for Andromeda for three bucks. Whoa. And yeah, I, yeah, I fired it up one uh, like once or twice, and it does look pretty nice. 
But guys, we are getting the official trilogy remaster on sometime in May. May something. I actually don't know the actual hard date. But I know it's May. Because we have a conundrum here, Nate. Before I be, you know, before I actually dive into what they're changing about the game or or, or, or doing anything. Sure. Did, you, did you know that they are releasing a collector's edition for the trilogy remaster? Wait. Something that already exists is getting a re collector's edition? Yeah. <laughs> no, man. That's not how you want to do it. All right. You want to drop a collector's edition at the height of excitement for something, not on the tail of some nostalgia, because you're going to get the hardcore collectors, but here's what's going to happen. Very much like those legendary helmets you can find everywhere at your local god dang, you know, disc replay for four ninety nine from Halo 3. Like, they're going to become inexpensive. Every You're going to find them everywhere because no one's – going to buy them they're going to sit on the shelf for years and they're going to get clearance out and that you know what i'm saying so i think this that is silly to me why are you doing a collector unless it's an listen unless you're like no nah, dog the collector's edition is amazing and if you're a fan you have to have it like it's amazing so i sent you a link of what comes in it uh um, oh, okay i'm gonna look right now it's funny you said legendary helmet because that's literally what this is. It's holy hell! Are you kidding me right now? You get the N7 one to one scale replica helmet with with LEDs that change the colors from blue to red, and it's wearable, right? Yeah, that's kind of dope. Because the one for that's one of my biggest complaints for the Legendary Edition of Halo Three, you can't wear the helmet. Doesn't make sense. All right, so then you get like a steel book, right? And then you get sure. um, some art. Canvas art print of Femship and of uh, the Normandy SR1. You get a Some printout. Morality pins. You get a printout of uh, Commander Shepard's acceptance letter into the N7 program. So that's a little nice tidbit of lore. Signed by signed by the man, Captain David Anderson. And you get an you get an enamel pin that actually swivels for 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 the Peregrine Renegade morality. So Damn, it's a, it's I'm like blown away by it. Looking at it, it's actually cool. No, wait, 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 wait. What? Hold on, time out. I'm reading, and I just got to a thing, and a line. Yeah. And now yep. I am I am concerned on a level that is profound, because now why are you hyping it like this? advertising differently you shits one mass effect legendary edition metal game case parentheses game not included parentheses <laughs> what yep yeah I'm looking i'm looking around everyone what all right so this isn't the first time i've done this uh they did this with andromeda and I talked about it here in the show. I had to it because I was pretty angry about it. They they had two different uh, a collector's edition for the Andromeda set. There was a uh, a hundred dollar one that came with a statue of the car. Yeah. And then there was one a two hundred dollar one that came with a remote control car of the car that you could control with your cell phone. It had a little camera on the front of it. And you connected it through Bluetooth, and you had like your little like go forward, go back, turn left, turn right. It looked, and I've seen it in action. It looks freaking cool. So two hundred dollars for that, and you still don't get the like the game. So then, really, it's two hundred and what sixty is the base price for the base price for uh, for Andromeda. Of course, then they also had the deluxe version of Andromeda, which cost like seventy seventy five dollars after tax, which gave you extra downloadable stuff. <laughs> Man, that's so I boycotted that one. I, as much of a collector I am, I, I boycotted it and said I'm not going to support that because I was just like, you need to you need to give me the game. You know, I remember there was a, a Halo uh, collector's edition at some point. 
I want to say it might have been the Master Chief Collection, but it might have been Halo 5. I don't really remember at this point. It's been years. But when you got your collector's box, it came with a code, a download code, not a hard copy. And several Halo fans were like, hey, what the hell? I think that was Halo Wars 2. It was Halo something. All I know is that Microsoft said, all right, send us back the code and we'll send you a physical copy of the game. So cool, they made it right. I mean, that that's, that's pretty much the M.O. for anything Xbox related. They make a decision, then they have to either like uh, follow through with it or succumb to fans' ire, which is a, that that has been the entire Xbox One um, experience in a nutshell. <laughs> it's like for sure. You know, here's the Xbox One. Here's all the stuff we're gonna do with it. All right, a week later, we're not doing any of that stuff anymore. We, and then we fired the guy that made all those decisions. And the, oh, and then it's like, oh, here, here's the tail end. Oh, we're going to double the price of Xbox Live at the end of the day. You know, we decided not to do that after all. Seems like that would be a very bad idea. I don't know. We we heard a little bird <laughs> tweeting out a little tweet message saying, I'm going to PlayStation Plus. <laughs> Anyways, no, Nate. Um, I'm a, I am disappointed that this, uh, you know, that this set's a really cool set. It's 150 bucks, So it's not quite 200 but... I gotta admit, I want it. The helmet is dope. I want the fucking helmet, and and that, and that's my that's my crux. If this well, were a if this were a hey a remote control or statue of the Mako or Mako, uh, from from the game, no, I don't care about that. But that helmet, are you telling me that I don't when I when when we get our room all situated and get our new podcasting place set up uh, with me in the other corner, and you and you'll actually be able to see stuff behind me, including. Uh, just like the old MTV Cribs, where the magic happens, you, you'll be able to see the bed in the background. But, you, hey. but, you, but you're telling me that I'm not going to have like my dresser or like a bookshelf up in the corner, and you're not going to be able to see that helmet. And you can flick it on during the show and yeah. have it blowing, of course, and change the color red or blue. Yeah. And think about it. Here's another thing too. Just, just the Power Rangers helmets alone, that are like the officials from Hasbro, are a hundred bucks, and they don't have lights. So that's a pretty, honestly, not a bad deal. But that's what I said initially. Market it differently. If this would have come out as we are currently getting ready to be releasing an exclusive uh, Mass Effect, you know, helmet, mm -hmm. and they just dropped this helmet with those little goodies inside, would you still be jazzed? Yes, but I would probably would. Um, might be harder for me to pick it up. Because okay. if they released it by itself, maybe... Uh, the price would be cheaper and they, and they would be going quicker. Um, because, see, here, here's the deal about the Mass Effect community. We're a diehard bunch. We we are whores for anything new. <laughs> uh, we, we are the ones that keep this entity alive. You know, despite all of BioWare's sure. efforts to not have it be alive <laughs> through their mis missteps and, their and everything. No, it's the fans that keep it alive. And so, w w like, when they release uh, a new scale gun or a new scale model of the ship or or this or that, a, a pin set. No, people buy that stuff, you know. I'm still kicking myself to this day for not buying the rest of the pop vinyls when they were released. I have two from the original set, and one of them's worth, like, 150 bucks. And the other ones are almost worth that now because they're because you know you, you know like you've been in that pop collecting world. Anything that has a unique uh, mold to help make that character look like that character is going to be more expensive. It becomes more valuable, and then also the fandom causes the value to go up. How many people are looking for the thing, and yeah. then how many pieces actually exist in the world? And then yep. you just basic math, man. Supply and demand, bro. Supply and demand. Yeah, and it, uh, so I mean, so like the pluses and negatives to this thing because as I said, I boycotted the Andromeda set because it just there wasn't enough there to entice me, and I didn't like the fact that the game's not included. I still don't like the fact that the game's not included, but I'm looking at it through a different light. Back three years ago, I probably would have been throwing my fist up in the air and really angry and cussing. I want to do that. They're selling this exclusively on the Bioware site. Not so it's not like it's going to be at retail. Yeah, it's not going to be at, at, at GameStop where they're selling you a collector's edition that doesn't make, take the game. This like you have to go to the Bioware store to even know it exists, 
where and, and, and what is what is centrally located on the Bioware store? It is you know they have Mass apparel, Effect gear, but they have yep. gear and they have apparel, but they also they also have collectibles. Like the the point is to go there for their officially released collectibles. And yep. so like on one hand, like it's like yes, I want to like fill my hands up. I'm like why can't you just give us a copy of the game? But this is the second time they've done it. Me, me boycotting the first one, the first time around, didn't do anything. They're still doing it. <laughs> Correct. Well, and then here's the other thing too, Brandon. The way it seems in the situation, they're putting it out there for the niche collector. Yeah. Those of you who know and want, and they know they can drop it on their Twitter, and it's going to catch the buzz. And the people with the money to afford it are going to come out and buy it, and they'll eat the few that don't get sold right away or whatever. And maybe they sit on their site for six months till they clearance out or whatever. But honestly, like, I like Mass Effect. I'm going to be honest with you right now. I like Mass Effect. I don't like it like you like it, but damn, do I love that helmet. It looks incredible. So there is even, uh, and I don't know if it was the the uh, the remote control. It might have just been the statue. It was actually discounted on the Bioware store to fifty bucks, so half off. And I went, hmm, that might look cool in the game room. And then I went, no, because if you get that, then you're gonna have the itch to collect the rest of it, and then that becomes a game. Well, you know, well, yeah, I mean, so if I can, if I can pull it, you know, I mean, that's one hundred fifty bucks. Plus shipping, because the free shipping was only for the first week, and I didn't have enough money to buy it in the first week. I, I am going to get the game. I think I'm going to get it on the Xbox, because I don't think I'm going to have a PlayStation 5 by then. I mean, let's just be real. Well, so we're pre praying for a couple miracles here. Need that Biden stimmy. Need a restock of PS5. Dude, the... Stimmy and a restock. Yeah. Okay, so... I could pull a Dick Tyner and get one at Best Buy. Using your credit card. Yeah. Did she just yell from the other room, babe, don't think about it? Because that's what it sounded like. I it, it, She might have. I mean, she knows what I'm... <laughs> Basically, if a PS5 props up on Best Buy, I plan to buy it if I can get one. Sure. Because, obviously... I would then pay that card off immediately uh, through stimmy money or tax, whatever, right? That was the plan. Well, they just released a new stock of Best Buy on Friday at noon. Where was I at? At work. Did it already sell out? Within minutes. Why is it still so redonkulously hot this far in? Like... What is it, like six months? The wave is the first six months of a system, and then it cools off? I know it wasn't the same for Wii because the Wii was a very unique thing. But I feel like in my prior experience, it's only usually the first six to eight months that a system is hot like this. When I got the PS4, I pre-ordered it. I was able to get it at, on launch night because I pre-ordered it like within days after E3 when it was the big announcement, right? The big yep. or we we knew about the PS4, but we did not know the price point, all that stuff. All the it's that classic E3 where Xbox is like TV, 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 sports, TV, sports, connect, Call of Duty. You know, and then it was like, you know, well what about what what about the the price point? $500. Okay, well, what about the internet? It's got to be connected all the time. What about the connect? Got to be connected all the time. What about used games? Won't play used games. And then PlayStation's like, it's going to play used games. You don't need the internet. It won't come with a camera. And it's $100 cheaper. And it was it, it was just... <laughs> a macho man elbow yeah. drop off the top. Oh yeah, dig it. So I got one, and and I went on launch night, and I picked it up. You could not do that. Like the pre-orders were all online. So the pre-orders, like just like how they're selling out now, really fast. That's how fast the pre-orders would sell out. So when when they started those back in September, they were gone like that. And then okay, so like if you bought it through GameStop or 
uh, then you then you, when you bought it, you have to have the money right then and there to pay it off right then and there. Or if you on Walmart, it would charge your card to make sure you had the money, and then they would give it back, which is really weird. But it would be like, do you really have this much money? Because if you don't, we're going to cancel it. Yeah, okay, he's got that much money. All right, you know, give him the money back. We'll, we won't charge him until it ships. And then Amazon was like, we'll just charge you when it ships. And, we're, <laughs> and hopefully you remember when it's going to ship. That way you have the money in there and you're just not like, oh, man, that rent's due. And then you get hit with that you know, $500. Ah! <laughs> rent's not getting paid this month, baby. <laughs> I got that PS5. We got the PS5 Blues. But no, uh, I'm probably not going to have a new console because I've pretty much almost just given up uh, at this point. Wait another I, year. I kind of want to wait, not necessarily another year, but I do kind of want to wait until maybe the design gets slimmed down a little bit because when that usually happens around Christmas time of the following season, you can get hella deals. And then they'll like be like, oh, by the way, those games you missed that came out in the first year, we're going to bundle them with all this exclusive shit now and make it cool. And you're like, oh, yeah, that's a great deal. I'm going to get it for Christmas. And, you know, that could be like within a year or two. But, I mean, because that thing's a monster. I'm not sure if you've seen it on somebody's shelf. It is, it, it's big. It's a big boy. So I plan on getting the the Mass Effect Trilogy Remaster for the Xbox One X. Because that's the most powerful last-gen console that I have. So, Nate, have you heard anything about what they're doing to bring these games up to speed? No, but I imagine you're going to fill me in. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, well, I mean, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because, I mean, they made videos upon videos. Uh, uh, but they're trying to make the first game more in line with the other two games control-wise because, obviously, that first game, when you play that first game now, oh, boy, it feels dated. <laughs> Pretty dated. <laughs> it's old. I mean, this game oh, was yeah. this game was in development uh, before they released Gears of War. So like, they released Gears of War, and then this game came out and was not quite Gears of War. And then Bioware's like, oh, that's how you do a cover shooter. All right, then we'll borrow a little bit of that and yoink. And you make Mass Effect Two with it. You know, you like, hey, you know, Gears of War, you got the chainsaw. Mass Effect Two, you've got yeah. the biotic charge. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> but uh, no. So they they're gonna try and make it a, a little bit more fluid. Um, I think they're doing snap targets with the aiming, so you're not like it's not so odd to aim. Uh, they are doing HUD, re, uh, re the, like they're redoing the HUD to make it more congruent with the other two games. So so sure. like, so it looks like it fits. The graphics are getting a huge overhaul of Mass Effect One. Like well, of course, it's over. You know what is that? Mass Effect came out in 07. So yeah, yeah. That's four, 14 years old. Yeah, man. <laughs> Damn. Makes you feel old now because you were there when that game launched at GameStop. <laughs> I was, in fact, standing behind that shelf pushing that game like pills to the addicts. Hey, man, you want this game? It'll it's that RPG scratch you've been looking for. And uh, you know there, you know some some minor stuff. Uh, level progression will, will will change a little bit, where you don't have to have a new game plus to get to level sixty. They are releasing all the DLC except for one, uh, the Pinnacle Station DLC for Mass Effect One, which was not included with the uh, trilogy set on PS3, uh, is also not in this one because of the source code. It's corrupted. Now, if you have a, if you have it on 360, you can still play it. It's downloadable on there. <laughs> so for some for whatever reason, they couldn't put it in there because they would have to rebuild it from the ground up, and they didn't want to do that. Another thing they're not putting in is the multiplayer from three, uh, because they said in order to put that in with, with everything that they were doing, it was going to cost as much time as what they were to, as they were putting into one to bring it up to speed. So. Also, this game is still in Unreal Engine 3. They were talking about putting it into 4, but there were certain proprietary aspects from the games in 3 that wouldn't be brought over. They would have to remake those from scratch. So it's, it really sounds like this project was given the most minimal budget possible to bring the games forward. So in other words, like not a remake. They can't remake them. They can't do all that stuff, but they could try and put 
a fresh coat of paint on it. And uh, the uh, the games will launch on a single launcher. So you, like you'll you'll launch the game and you'll be able to pick Mass Effect one, two, or three. And also uh, the character uh, creation, which is mostly the same, has now been uniform across the three uh, consoles. Or uh, three systems. Uh, uh, damn it. Nice. Three games. Three games, not three consoles or systems. It's, it's the same three games. I knew what you meant. Uh, they even brought... They didn't have an official Femship design until f- three, right? All the uh, So when they gave her her own actual canonized uh, design uh, in three, they made the cover flippable so you can have male or female ship depending on which was your uh, preference. Well, now you can you can have that 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 default female ship from three all the way in the first game. So nice. Yeah, they're making some you know some some changes, and you know like like after the show, maybe I'll show you some of the comparisons uh, from what they've sh- kind of shown off. Two and three are not going to get a big massive overhaul because those are the more uh, re uh, more recent games. Uh, two thousand nine, two thousand twelve. And they, if you play them today, they don't feel incredibly outdated, <laughs> essentially. I want to say they did some work for the Mako too. They made it to where it's a, they they made fixes to the uh, to the physics engine uh, for it, and they gave it a boost option to where it'll travel faster. <laughs> so, so if you just want to get done with those sections faster, you can try and get it done faster. Yeah. But no, I'm super excited the fact that it's coming out and playable, completely playable on modern consoles because. As I said, they are backwards compatible on the Xbox One or Xbox Series S. If, if you have that console and you have the original games, I want to say they're even on EA Play. If, if you have Game Pass, you can get them on oh, there. Nice. So, like, they're out there and they're available. But my kid is out there crying because he's like, I want to play this on a PS5 and we ain't got one. So, it just it's not going to happen, buddy. I'm sorry. You know, I'm right there with you. I can't help you. No, but this, you know, they released a lot of remasters, you know. Oh, yeah, it's become the trend in video games. But there's more to be done. There, You know, we can do a lot more. So the rest of this episode, we're going to dedicate to... I made a list, Nate made a list. We don't know what you, where, like what each other's lists are. About games from days, days gone by that have not received the remaster treatment. Now, the only thing that I will say about this is that it, the, like the same rules apply as the Mass Effect trilogy. We're not rewriting like the story. We're not rewriting the game. We're not making a whole new game based off the older game. You know, it's, it, this isn't a remake. This is a remaster. So basically, the game pretty much has the gameplay can be tweaked. The gameplay can be, uh, you know. Uh, augmented the graphics can be given a really good shine coat of paint but ultimately this is an old game being brought forward and it's just going to look prettier and be presented prettier but nay I will let you go first since you said you were able to create like a little bit of a list and we'll see if any of our stuff matches so I have seven official picks one bonus pick I will make my first pick of these Alan Wake. No, that's cool. That's a good one. I loved that game. I thought it was very, very creative. I loved the gameplay mechanic with the flashlight, the story. Everything about that game was awesome. It is still to this day one of my favorites from the 360, and I would love to see it modernized, graphically enhanced, get those black colors even darker on those Mm -hmm. 4K televisions and really drive home the horror aspect and the suspense aspect of that game. I believe that game is is just like the Mass Effect trilogy. It is backwards compatible, but it would benefit a lot from that 4K remaster and you know getting that older game. And they see that's a cool thing about the remasters. These are older games, and so the newer hardware can push those to to like 60 frames and keep that 4K resolution as well. You know, so that you know, that that is a really good pick. I'm kind of mad I didn't think about that one because that, <laughs> sorry, uh, not sorry. I'm glad I picked it. Damn it! But this next one, it it's almost a cop out because it's kind of been done before. Okay, but not completely. Uh, the Metal Gear Solid series. So they have done remasters of two Sons of Liberty and uh, Snake Eater three. And of Peace Walker, right? 
That was released yeah. on the PS3 and 360, respectively. However, they also had uh, the Vita versions of two and three. Yes, and then if they also had a collection on the PS3, which had a download code for the PS1 Classic of MGS1, and it, they had the remasters of two, three Peace Walker, and it included MGS4. So this is a complete 4K 60 frame upgrade, and it's going to have you know MGS1, two, three Peace Walker, four. Five <laughs> and twin snakes. Wow. I will love that. The having twin snakes is dope because definitely unique, like uh upgrade to the graphical content instead of going with the classic MGS one call that most people will use. That's something that hasn't been touched. It is also funny because I, I have something and maybe that can just be my next top topic after we get down here. But I do also have something from the GameCube, I think, that needs to come to the modern era. So Hell yeah. Now, see, I would also include the original PS1 entry. as like have Ooh. So I would have that one. Uh, it, it'd be MGS1 plus VR missions. So you, you, so you could play that. And for, for that one, you're just getting like a... You're not getting a, a really crazy graphical upgrade for that. You're just getting the original game and its original presentation... In a 4K resolution, so it's not as jagged. It's not blown up super bad. Like we're gonna re- increase the increase the resolution on it, but we're not gonna make it that much prettier. That's where the Twin Snakes version you can dial in that resolution and make it high def looking, you know. And so you get that version, and and, and that's why you know you already have the the remasters from Blue Point on two, three, and Peace Walker from PS3. So you just port those over. Up res those a little bit, you know. Hey, there's a the same games already, but then MGS4 has been tied to the PS3. It hasn't been the only way that you can play that on the PS4, and I believe it was on there. I'm not sure if it is, but it was on uh, PlayStation Now, and you can't download those to your system on PS3 for the PS3 games. You have to stream them. So that's a little bit of a mixed bag experience. So yeah. I would want I would want a full 4K 60 frames port of that. And since we already have every, we already have all the other ones, why not include five with, and give it a slight little just resolution bump? Because the game is already really good gameplay wise. Does so. that mean you then need to also somehow decide to include Rising? Because <laughs> well, um, this this is just the solid series. Okay, I love that. I love that. Yes, and it, yes. It, and you know you can call it the uh, the. The Metal Gear, uh, you know, solid collection, you know, and have like it, 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 and it's like the solid HD, like whatever. But no, I, I really like the idea because literally Twin Snakes was remade on on the GameCube and it has been completely forgotten about. I understand why Kojima, when he did four, didn't use graphics from that version because that's not his version. That's not the one he made, right? But there's one thing he did take from that game. And that was their decision to um, lessen the um, um, accents from Mei Ling and Naomi Hunter. So, uh, yeah, he did bring that forward. When you play through the Shadow Moses section of, the, of MGS4 on PS3, and you hear flashbacks of Mei Ling, she's talking, and it's, and it's audio from the Twin Snakes version, or re-recorded, wow. whichever they did, but... Huh. Yeah, so what's your next one? Going with a GameCube classic that I think gets totally undercut, no one talks about. It is the uh, granddaddy, as it were, to No More Heroes. I'm talking Killer 7. Nice. I think that game would do very well to get a modern uh, uptick, as it were. Killer 7. Um I'm trying to remember that. Like I, I, I remember the, the box art, but like, but I never played it. So like, what's the game? Like, what's the core gameplay? Essentially, you're a lead assassin, and I, I, I'm pretty sure what happens is there's like a mass betrayal. I can't, man. It's been a, it's been de- it's been at least a decade since I played the dang game, and of course, I'm a big fan of No More Heroes, but No More Heroes has recently been 
remastered. So I mean, PS3 had a remaster for it. So I yeah, I chose to not go with it. But uh, yeah. So oh, that's right. Killer Seven was also on the PS2. Okay, that's remember that. I remember seeing the seeing that and like in the old family video. Yes. When I was looking for uh for you know for games to rent, uh but no good pick. My next one is an this is another multi multi pack here, but the Dead Space trilogy. Yes. I am shocked they have not done this. Now this is from EA, so EA they only got into the remaster game about a year ago, year and a half ago with uh, Burnout yeah. Paradise. And then, like, of course, there's the, there's been that low underground hum and, you know, shaking the fist about doing a Mass Effect trilogy re- a remaster. But after that, because the real the real down th- the, the real down spiral of this is that who made uh, Dead Space was that Visceral? Dead Space. I'm trying to look over at it. I'll EA. just Google it. Well, EA published it, but I'm talking about the oh. actual. Um, uh, yeah, Visceral Games. Visceral Games developed it. EA took them out back and like shot them in the head. So Visceral Ooh. no longer exists. But if you can get a good team that could bring these games up to speed a little bit, now like you don't have to do much for the gameplay wise because the gameplay is like is pretty fine. If you need to tweak it and fix some bugs, that's one thing. But for the most part, can you imagine uphauling the graphics to be in that 4K resolution, 60 frames, and as you said, black in the blacks. You know, darken that game up a bit uh, to make it pop on that 4K screen, and you're, yeah, no, like this. When when these games came out, especially the first one, it scratched that Resident Evil itch that 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 Resident Evil Four and Five were not scratching. Like those games became more action games. This game brought back that suspense. You oh, know, oh yes, it did. You know that that tension. That is something that I feel. Uh, they they brought back to Resident Evil with the RE2 remake, and and even RE7 bring back the tension because when you, like when you feel like you're like this, th- that's when you've got a good scary game because when you're already on edge, then they can jump at you or they can scare you easier rather than when you're just lean back action game. So now Dead Space trilogy, bring it. I love that one. Uh, let's stick with Xbox 360 World. I'll bring a deep, deep, depo cut. I want, if we're talking horror, I want a remaster of Clive Barker's Jericho. Wow, that that I that's going back. I loved that game. You were the multiple different characters with the multiple different crazy powers, the horror based setting, like the graphics were crazy, the monsters were creepy. Everything about that game was tight. It just needs a graphical update and it would still be on point. No, like, yeah, see, that takes me back because that was like, was that a launch title or near launch title? Uh, I would say uh, First no, year? No, early 2007. Okay. Because it came out when right. I was at GameStop. Because that's why I have the collector's edition of it. Because I was like, "Ooh, this looks dope!" And Sly Barker, I'm about that. I see. I, I remember it being pretty early, and and that was was that on PS3 or was that just a 360? Uh, I think that they it came out for both. I'm actually 100. percent It came out for both systems, but I think that the 360 is the only system that had a collector's edition. Though. And it's probably the better place to play it, especially for those early games that came out uh, during that time period. They they definitely had a better uh, resolution and frame rate on the 360 comparatively, for the most part. My next one, man, I just realized all all the rest of mine, except for my last one, are multi are multi packs. <laughs> um, but this next one is another series that's kind of stuck on that last gen or last last gen, and that is Dragon Age Origins and Dragon Age Two. So Dragon Age Origins also has a expansion called Dragon Age Origins Awakening. So it it, it would be those three as as like a trilogy remastered because we already have Inquisition that's on the PS4 and on the Xbox One. Those are backwards compatible. You know you'll be able to play those. And probably have a patch, you know, it, it, when you release this, do like a little upgrade patch on the on on, on Inquisition just to bump up uh, the resolution and frame rate. 
but I'll never forget. I was late to the Dragon Age Origin party because, and I don't the this game and also the next game, unfortunately, because I I, I don't want to say this in a mean way, but sometimes when you have roommates, it's detrimental to the games that you want to play. You see more of the game that you that you want to see. You don't get to experience it as a immersive first time uh, player. Uh, you're walking through the living room and you're catching a glimpse of some level thirty boss, and you're like, "God damn it! I didn't want to see that or know that was coming." You know, or 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 like or story elements or what or like whatever. If you're like if you're hanging out in the living room and you're like, "God, I, I'm hanging out out here and he's playing it," I could leave, but I guess I'll just sit here and watch. And so then you end up like damaging your own interest. That happened to me with Dragon Age Origins, and so I didn't play Dragon Age Origins and complete it until like 2013. It was it was right before the first Last of Us came out, because I was I was actually I had the Last of Us, I bought it when right when it came out, but I was saving it for my uh, for my shutdown for my vacation, and uh, I was trying to finish up Dragon Age, and and I'm like, oh man, I. I I think I'm, I'm going towards the last boss. I, I only got a few more hours left. Well, that few more hours turned into eight, eight to ten. And I remember like staying up all night and in the morning and I beat the game. And I'm like, you know, you know what? This game was way more awesome than what I thought it was going to be. And I, and I wish I would have actually went back and played it. But it's just that issue of, man, I, I, I saw too much of it. And then my hype for it went down. But no, bring those games forward because um, there's no real way to like to play them. Like m- maybe they're backwards compatible. I-, I don't know for sure. I would say for a lot of these that are on the th- that are on the 360, odds are there's gonna there, like there's like 500 games. There's a lot of them. The big ones are probably gonna be backwards compatible. And and you know this is another one published by EA because this is also made by Bioware. So odds are if you have Game Pass, they might have these Dragon Age games on there. So. That's awesome. All right, Brando. I was looking at my list and I'm debating. Uh, man, there's like, uh, okay, okay. You know what? You know, let's let's kick it back to the start of the show. Let's press X to Jason because I think Heavy Rain is the perfect choice to get brought to the modern time. So it kind of already has. Really. I believe it's on the PS4. Uh, I believe they brought Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls to the PS4. I didn't know that. So yeah, it's worth a it's worth a Google. <laughs> um, but no, uh, no, like that is a great game. And if that's not backwards compatible on, on the PS5, then it should be. However, you do bring up a good point because now Quantum Dream is no longer. They're not going to be making games exclusively with uh, Sony anymore. So like and like for the past little while for Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls, and for Detroit, they've all been released on PlayStation platforms. Henceforth, I believe they have been put on the PC, Epic Game Store, maybe. At least Detroit has. Um, oh, check it out, bro. They released the Quantum Dream Collection. Yeah. Which was Detroit, Heavy Rain, and Beyond Two Souls in one pack for the PS4. So what they need to do, they they need to do that upgrade and put it out on the Xbox as well. Um, be- because now that they are no longer, you know, married at the hip as, as a second uh, class developer or second party or whatever you want to call them, they're not owned by Sony. They were never owned by them at all. Because if you remember, like Indigo Prophecy came out on both Xbox and PlayStation uh, way back in the day. It Sounds like there's a tantrum happening. Holy cannolis. Dad life, podcasting. What's your next da- pick, bro. <laughs> podcasting dad life. Um, so I'm actually going. To, the next two uh, picks that I have are actually uh, uh, now on opposite side side of the fence. So uh, this the the first one is going to be pl- uh, the first pick that that I'm going to talk about here is going to be uh, these were on the PS3 exclusively, and the next pick they were on the Xbox exclusively. So. Sure. Um, and I, so this first one, the, it, it can't go to multiple consoles because it's still owned by Sony. They, this is a team owned by Sony. And I, I was really surprised, like, throughout the entire life 
of of the PS4, these games never got the quick remastered release for 40 bucks treatment. Infamous 1 and 2. Ooh. Yep. So, like, because Infamous Second Son was a near-launch window game, and it was pretty good. It, it wasn't great, though. That was the unfortunate thing. After, you know, 1 and 2 really set that bar, and 2 kind of like, yeah, or, uh, or I'm sorry, Infamous... Second Son kind of went, eh, it, 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 it's still good. It's still good. But we didn't really bring all that new to the table here. It, it, just, it just looks better. Well, and then the company would, uh, you know, the devs, they would then pivot away from, infam- from Infamous. And, and would, would, when they would create one of the, one of, like one of last year's most hype games, Ghost of Tsushima. And one of the most graphically a- appealing games I've ever seen. But... I feel, you know, coming onto the PS5 even, that, you know, you could give Second Son a little bit of an upgrade, but, you know, upgrade the first two, bring those forward. I think there's an expansion, right, for the second game? I do think so, yeah. Like, is that, I can't remember, Festivals of Blood or something like that? Brain not remember. (laughs) Brain not know. Uh, But I do know that that was kind of hard to find a physical copy of that Expansion, but no, infamous one and two. I love that pick. I'm gonna switch to do the rules, lit up, take a Wii game not talked about and bring it to the forefront because I think we need Mad World in the modern. Like, bro, that old school hack 'em, slash 'em, beat 'em up game was the shit. Black and white, bloody red. I love it. Give me more of that. Yeah, man, you had Greg Proops as the really like flamboyant uh, announcer. Uh, I believe that's a Platinum Games of Sega, right? Uh, I, I, I believe that's check. I believe that's Platinum. It feels like a Platinum it's game. Platinum Games published by Sega. Man, wow. look at that shit. Look at that. That was quality, dude. No, like that. That see, that's a really cool gem on the Wii. And see, as as, as we move further away from the Wii, you know, a lot of these games that are gems that that like you. you you had to shovel through a lot on the Wii to find some really awesome games, you know. No more heroes, is another one. Yeah, no more heroes is great. Um, uh, the second Red Steel was way better than the first one, but the first one really turned a lot of people off, including myself. Um, but like, you know, they had so many games geared towards kids and shovelware that like you like even some of the games that you would think would be crap shovelware are actually pretty decent. But you actually have to go to YouTube. To see video of it to go. Oh wait, this isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. There's a lot of games like that on the Wii, and and it's it's even better if you own a Wii U or if you're able to have one of those still and keep it in good shape because uh, you know you're going to get those games looking the best that they can look currently by you know having them connect via HDMI port. So, what Joe next one, my dog? My next one. It is a double pack. These aren't directly related to each other. Uh, Again, in, from the Xbox, right? Yeah, the, yeah. This one is these. These were released exclusively on the Xbox 360. Uh, these two games do not go together storyline wise. So, like, these are two separate games. However, they were both made by the same team and the same director, and that is Blue Dragon and Lost Odyssey from from Miss Walker. And of course, uh, they were made by you know Hironobu Sakaguchi, the guy that made Final Fantasy. And, uh, you know, he went over there and made Blue Dragon. Uh, if, if you ever played Lost Odyssey, it feels literally like it feels like a Final Fantasy. And uh, these are games that have just kind of flown under the radar for a long time now. You know, Blue Dragon definitely keeps that, uh, you know, it, you know, it has a Akira Toriyama motif. That a lot of the characters, you know, just like the Dragon Quest series or a, or a Chrono Trigger, some of those games, that they all look like Dragon Ball characters, essentially. So... Uh, no, really great games. And there's actually another game. And I, I didn't put this in there because these were on the 360 only. And this next one was on the Wii only. But the last story was another game that that company had made. And it was only on the Wii. So maybe, you you know, put out a trilogy of like Miss Walker collection, you know, Blue Dragon, Lost Odyssey, Last Story as these RPGs up res them, frame rate them up, throw them out there. I'm about that. I would buy three. Well, I would only buy. I would only buy one, but three in spirit. Because hell yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, no. I just 
when I was thinking, like I'm like, and I realized I have one that j- that was just for PlayStation. I'm like, oh no, those are those are perfect picks, you know. Love it. All right. Well, I'm gonna bring my last regular pick to the fold because I do have a bonus pick, but it bends the rules. So okay. My last regular pick is just based on a game that I love. Nothing in particular stands out about why I think it should be remastered, other than I think the story was phenomenal, the gameplay was incredible. And I also want to note how we have not had one crossover. So if this isn't the crossover, like we haven't had anything that like was the same pick. So if it's not this one, then we did really great, I think. But Singularity. Ooh. That game was fucking amazing. Singularity. I remember that. My neighbor took them N99s and he's been up in my assholes. Because there's the whole, if you find there's a bonus Easter egg, if you go to one of the lockers, there's a letter, and it's written in, it sounds like Bo Rat wrote it, and it's talking <laughs> about how in the neighbor, you know, you know, he took his neighbor's whatever, and his or his neighbor took whatever from him, and you know what? I'm just going to find it because it's funny enough to read on here, so... All right. While you're saying that, I'll I'll, I'll actually go because I actually have uh, three more or no four more picks. Um, again, multi collections here. The Final Fantasy Thirteen trilogy. Okay. Um, you know it's not my favorite, but they went through the hassle of making three games, and they're only available on the on the PC. I think they're on the PC, but like on consoles, they're only available on PS3 and 360. So why not? release the trilogy you know 13 trilogy uh, up as that but the other one that i came up with was the final fantasy one through six collection uh and that is because there are remasters of excuse me seven eight and nine and even ten and twelve but one through six is not available on, on like any major consoles and so what i would do because of the ones that are out now this is where it gets hard so one and two would be the psp ports uh, one and two, those are made in 16 bit on the PSP. Three and four would be the DS ports. So, like, th- those were, re- were remade from the ground up. Three had to be because of bad code. And uh, four followed suit, where, like, they did redid the character models. And four, they added voice acting. So, they really brought that one up to speed. There's a version of four that was on the PSP that's called the Complete Edition that came with the DLC that was only exclusively before that released on the Wii. That one could be on there. But I figure since 3 is getting a DS version, people are probably going to want the 4 DS version to go with it. But then on for, fi- uh, for 5 and 6, I'm going with the Game Boy Advance versions because they are much better translations of those games. Uh, and then, of course, across the board, you can clean up the graphics a little bit if you want that, or you can have the old-style graphics so you can flip back and forth. As well as uh, I would include like options for like a remastered soundtrack. So you can have a remastered soundtrack or original soundtrack. Love that. Did you find the letter? Oh, yeah, I found the letter. Here we go. I have to read this aloud. Like Borat? I'm going to read it like Borat. My neighbor is pain in my assholes. I got the bear made of fur. He must get the bear made of a fur. I get the can of meat. He must get the can of meat. I get E99 technologies. He cannot afford a great success. (laughs) What the hell? And that was just in a locker because E99 is what one of the main mechanics of Singularity. Mm-hmm. It's how you use it, like how you use your power. So he's just referencing it, – it's literally a quote from the, the movie, but instead of it being whatever the last thing is, he can't afford it. Uh, great success. So I just I, – I always love that. I took a picture of it on my old phone way back when, one of my first camera cell phones when I was like I playing through Singularity. I was like, oh, that's awesome. But all right, I have a, my bonus one. All right. And I want to bend the rules because I do think that this is a game that deserves a full remake. Okay. I think it deserves a better story. I think it deserves the most graphical excellence any company could provide. And I think that when I say it after all this buildup, you're going to give me the most what the F look ever. The Punisher. The one on the old uh, Xbox and PS. Oh, that one was fun. Yes. That one was fun. Man, that game was brutal. Yes, it was. You could dunk a dude's head in a fryer. In a fryer, I remember using a drill. Like one of those yep. like drill bits. Oh, man. Yeah. 
You know, like especially like, can you imagine if you could kind of do an original story but get John Bernthal to do it? Oh my gosh, all about it! Hell yeah! I mean, do you hear us, Marvel? Make that happen! Come on, man! You you guys made that Deadpool game a long time ago. <laughs> Make this. So I'm just gonna go ahead to my bonus pick because mine, I'm not gonna remake it. It is gonna be in the same style. So the graphics are gonna look dated, but they're gonna look shiny. <laughs> shiny but dated. Yeah, it has sprinkles, right? Ooh. Yeah, nice little callback there. Anyway. But it has to be updated due to rights issues, due to uh, names, due to roster. You know, basically it has to be modernized in every facet of the form, except for not rewriting the original material that made it good. I'm talking about WWF No Mercy. So you remake No Mercy... Basically, what you're going to be doing is taking the original game, make some improvements to the source code if you can, uh, collision detection, and uh, you know maybe uh, you'll know, you'll be able to you know make some changes to it to where like the frame rate doesn't slow down as bad when there's more than two people doing something at the same time, you know. But then for roster, you can't have a lot of the old people in there because they're just not in the company. They're either some of them are dead. I mean, let's just be real. Exiled from the company forever. Either exiled or like they don't work there anymore, or they're dead, or they, it just because the company doesn't have rights to every single. Of course, this was the WWF game; they're not called that anymore, you know. So they would be WWE. So like you would be basically because they they made a game, and I'm not sure if you played it, uh, but they made a game uh, in in the interim, in between like them re. Starting over from the 2K series because they 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 bundled it so bad on 2K20, but they made a game called Battlegrounds. I've heard of it. Okay, so it's on PS now, and I've tried it, and me and me and Wyatt have played it, and it's a little fun. It's 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 bare bones, completely. It, it's it's super ridiculous. Like you can destroy the ring, you can have environmental damage. It, it's like a it, it's like a and and everybody's like really teeny, like and like kid sized almost. But they've got like Undertaker, and Undertaker always wrestles with his hat on, like which is hilarious. I love that. And you you unlock characters by well, you do stuff in the game, you get money in game. So like, there's kind of a a, a microtransaction incentive here. But when you collect them, the all the characters are like in, they're like action figures, and they're all inside the thing, and they're trying to get out. And you can when you unlock them, you unlock like different uh, costumes for them and everything. That's awesome. Uh. It's also the only game so far they've had that feature Gronk as a playable character. <laughs> Gronkster. Anyway, no. I would take that same idea, but bring back No Mercy, because No Mercy is long heralded. Do this exact do this specifically for the diehard wrestling fans. You know, don't release this as like this is the replacement for 2K20. Keep working on that. Get a smaller team together to look at No Mercy, bring it forward. Don't update the graphics completely i want them to still be a little block i want that 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 n64 charm right you know they don't need to look fresh and like completely smooth uh but, but they don't need to look horrendous either and just put the modern day roster on there get as many modern day legends as you, as you can fit on there that makes sense you know and yeah put out a modern day no mercy edit no, it's like No Mercy 2.0 or something like that. And, and, and But see, then of course, you, then you could go through and you could try to like animate some new moves because there's some moves that have been invented or do, done by modern superstars that aren't, weren't being done back then. You know, and a lot of people in the modding community uh, play the game on PC and they find a way to mod, mod moves together. I, I've seen some crazy stuff done on the online modding community. And, you know, seeing what they're doing... Give give you know give a team the right resources to be able to sit there and do it. I think it'd be fun, you know. Release it just just like you would like a battlegrounds. You know, uh, this is a game that uh, you know uh, a, make it like NBA Street for WWE, something like that. But it's like something that's not going to be graphically be pushing the boundary, so you can put it on everything, you know. Because battlegrounds was released on the Switch. Of course, the newer games have like. 2K18 went went to the Switch and it was a nightmare. It still is a nightmare. It, it it's a waste of your money. Do not buy that game. But Battlegrounds runs fine because it's kind of like a 
a much smaller game, almost kind of like a mobile type game, like in terms of how it's how it looks. So, no man, like, like that was my bonus pick. I thought that'd be kind of like again i, I want to remake it but i don't want to remake it because i feel like once you start messing with it too much then you mess with the formula of what made that game great you know great i feel you yeah man that's it that's all i got cool that's all i got uh so hopefully we'll get some of these nice cool remasters in the future and uh you know but but in the meantime i mean we got some cool new games coming out sort of I mean, I mean everything going on in sort of. like or like everything going on in the real world is guaranteed, guaranteed to slow stuff down. You know, I mean they're making a remake of Pokemon Snap if if you care about that. I do care about that. I'm big excited. Yeah, yeah. So is Dick. Dick was excited about that. Um, I'm not really, uh, but but that's just me uh, because I've never really like got that into the original because it because it it's basically like a rail shooter. But it's not. But you're not shooting anybody. <laughs> you're taking pictures. Um, but I mean, I'll, oh, we got that remaster of uh, Skyward Sword coming to the Switch. That's cool. Did you see anything about that? Yes, I did. That's amazing. Uh, so like, they're making it where you don't have to do motion controls. You can do the, uh, the stick stick slashes. Oh yeah. Yeah, so like you know, some different stuff, but no, man. Hopefully, we'll get some new stuff down the line. It, it, like especially while we're waiting, uh, I feel like remasters. Number one, you can use them for cash grabs, but number two, you can use them for filler time in, in, in between those big time games. And yeah. you know, let let the developers have the time they need to make those big games as good as they can be, and don't rush it out. In the meantime maybe you start like hey you know the same team like you know you know just like that wwe thing they're working on that new 2k21 or whatever maybe it comes out this year maybe it doesn't hey well you know, if it doesn't come out this year it'll be 2k22 yeah exactly but uh you know it just like you know it's like you know dragon age it's like we're getting a new dragon age like they've already announced it dragon age whatever it's gonna be called dragon age 4 or whatever so you know we're waiting on that we got the mass effect trilogy why not why not work on those old games and bring those out? That way, the whole series is playable. You know, and and, and it's sort of like a sixty dollars cash grab. In, like in between, you could catch uh, players up. So, yep, that's all Love I it. got. I As, think, I think maybe one extra extra bonus just to throw it out there. Finally, lastly, in the quick speeding rounds, as a lightning round, the Left for Dead series. We are getting. We need Left, we need Left for Dead in this world. We are getting like a. Um, spiritual successor to that uh that i saw i can't remember what i can't remember what's called but it's it's basically like the left for dead series and if you see gameplay of it you're like wow this is left for dead i think it got it got revealed during the game awards and i can't remember what's called but the moment i see it it's like it's like a playoff the title left for dead okay so like yeah we'll, like when we get off here i'll have to show that to you guys but thanks nate for joining me on this yeah little special episode here Bro, thanks for having me back on Game Addicts. It has been some time. It is always great to pop in here, chat it up with your amazing audience, uh, promote the shit that we're doing, as always. Yeah. And, uh, get on. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, you know, we, uh, we, you know, we do have some other shows. And first and foremost, uh, the new show that's out now, the, the, you know, the hit show Rank Em All, which is a podcast where we listen and rank to some of our favorite artists and bands' discographies. That's out now on podcast services as well as YouTube. Check it out. Or go to the website at rankaball.rocks. Of course, uh, Nate is also the host of the Journey into Comics podcast, which I frequently uh, sit in on. And you can check that out on the, all the same places and check out journeyintocomics.com. I thought you were going to say that you frequently host it for me when I have to work. <laughs> well, there's that. There's that. I have to sit in. Man, me and Tyler, we're, we were just like, man. <laughs> I feel like we're, I just feel like we're phoning this one in because <laughs> we were both tired. But oh, uh, I feel that. You know, it is what it is. But also, um, you can also check out the uh, the um, the the in game boss program w with my buddy uh, uh, over there, and he's got a couple different shows over there. You know, rocking that out there. It, of course, you got the in game boss podcast, and then you got uh, like they, they and then they got a movie podcast. Uh, like uh, when, like when Jeremy met Nam, so they got that uh, going on over there. They got another one too. I think there's another series over there. World uh, Trade Game Show, bro. Yeah, the world. Yeah, I, I was building up to that. I was, I was trying to remember if he had like any other ones, but yeah, uh, I do a show with him called the World Gaming Trade Show, and uh, it basically where we take 
it's kind of like what we're doing, what we did here today. But but instead of just doing remasters, it's like what games haven't been touched in a long time, you know. So what sparked the idea for this episode was a game that sparked on the last episode where I talked about Brutal Legend. And so it was a remake of Brutal Legend, but it was a spiritual successor. So it's it's a sequel where you don't have to play the first one to play the second one. And Nate, uh, I think you'll really like some of the conversations that we had on there about that, or at least my ideas, because it really, uh, it, it, it was a love letter, even more of a love letter to the metal world. But um, yeah, go check out In Game Boss Program where you can find out all those cool podcasts. In the meantime, that's going to wrap it up here on the Game Addicts Podcast, Nate. Yay! And until next time, I have been your Player One Brando. I've been Player Two Nate. And we will catch you later on down the road, guys. Game on. <laughs>